Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. Uh, in case this has been shared, because I do invite you guys to share this to your pages, share it to your timeline, uh, share it to your team page if you have a team page. Um, so in case this winds up somewhere where you don't know who you're looking at, hi, my name is Alicia Lido. I'm also known as Lady Pastorpreneur. What is Lady Pastorpreneur? Well, of course I'm a lady and I am passionate about my family, about my fitness journey, as well as about having fun. I believe in not taking myself too seriously. And I just love what I do. I am a wife, I'm a mom of four, and it just is a, a part of everything that I do. And so it's really a part of my brand as well. Um, yes, I am a pastor uh, of a non-denominational multicultural church here, um, just outside of Cleveland, Ohio. And I'm um, just privileged to work alongside my husband there as well while we are helping people to excel. And I just love my social media platform. It gives me an opportunity to do what I like to call lifestyle evangelism, where I hope to draw people to Christ, to want to know him and to have a personal relationship with them as they just see him being used or me being used and him being a part of my life. So uh, that that is that component. And then, of course, there is the entrepreneur. Oh, my goodness. I've always had that in my blood uh, when I was in private practice as an attorney, uh, when I ran a, a variety of businesses along with my husband. And now I'm so um, blessed and fortunate to be a professional network marketer uh, with a wonderful health and wellness company called Plexus. And I have the awesome privilege of leading a team of both men and women as I help them to pursue their financial goals and help them excel. So welcome tonight. I'm glad you were able to join me. And I am excited to be talking to you about something that Laura laid on my heart to share with my social media audience. So it's interesting. I was talking to a girlfriend of mine this morning um, and she was like, how was the leadership retreat? And so I gave her an earful. I was just telling her about how I saw the Lord work, how God was just speaking throughout the entire um, trip. And as we went through that, you know, as only good girlfriends can do, she challenged me and she said, did you do a YouTube about that? <laughs> and I thought I wasn't planning on it. But as I began to think about it, I re realized that if I am going to be true to this mission and true to this call of helping others excel, um, it is going to require me to share some things that I know will bless you as well. So I want to share something that will bless you, share something that will motivate you and inspire you to see um, the potential and the possibilities of what can happen in your life if you believe as well. So let me start off by telling you my testimony. As you probably know, if you follow me, um, I am um, just returning from Orlando, Florida, where I had the opportunity to earn a leadership retreat. Um, and so in that particular, um, you know, encounter, I went down there and the first part of the miracle was that I was even able to stay in the hotel that I was able to stay at. I was at the Gaylord Resorts and the Convention Center. And that was a miracle in and of itself because I had qualified for this contest a little bit later than some other people. And because there was such a phenomenal response, there's 600,000 ambassadors in the company, um, 2,900 qualified. So it was a little bit more than they were expecting, even though that's a small fraction of the company. And um, all the rooms were gone. So I was told that you know we would be compensated, which I thought was so... Um, just integral of the company uh, they would give us cash and we would be able to book our room somewhere else and as well as have enough money for transportation to get back and forth and so um, everyone was quite excited about that except I knew in my mind that I had a vision and that God had shown me the Gaylord Resort and so one of the things I've learned to do that I want to share with you is to hold on to what God shows you even when um, the outward appearances of it all, even when the evidence, um, even when the reports are coming to you are contrary to what God has shown you, I've learned and I've mastered the art of holding on to what God has placed in me as the vision. So I had this vision board. I had worked very hard for the, the three months to qualify for this trip on my phone, on my vision board, everywhere I had, it had a picture of the Gaylord result resort. And so in my mind, 
I'm not sure how this is going to happen. I just know that this is what God has shown me, and this is what is going to happen for me. I'm going to claim this for my life. Well, as it would have it, it was full um, in terms of all of the, the, the spots and positions that were available through the company. And my husband said, um, what's the number to the hotel? <laughs> You've got to know my husband in order to understand this. And I gave him the number. He called. He said, I'd like to book a room. And they said, what's, what are the dates? And he gave him the date and he booked the room and he hung up the phone. And I looked at him and I said, you got a room? And he said, yeah, here, reservation just went to your email. Check your email. I checked my email. I was just like, how did I get a room? I thought the hotel was booked. I thought the hotel was full. Um, I later came to understand that the block for my company was full. <laughs> That they, of course, had a contract and they had a certain number of rooms that they secured at a, a discounted rate. That was full. Those were gone. But there were still rooms available in the hotel. And because we did not give up, because I believed what God showed me and pursued it, God provided that for me. And I was so, so excited when we checked in and we got into that room and, you know, I shared pictures. It's on my blog. It's on my Facebook profile. It's on my Instagram profile. And I shared this experience because it was the beginning of one victory where I was able to see God's hand at work when I am willing to not give up on what he's promised. That's something I want you to take away from this today as we do this motivation what is it that God has promised you? What is it that God has shown you that you feel deeply in your heart it is supposed to happen for you? But yet and still, you have all these different conflicting reports, people telling you it can't happen, people telling you it'll never come to pass. Are you willing, are you bold enough to wait on God, to believe God, and to be obstinate and stand on his promises until you see them come to pass? That's the first thing I want to challenge you to do on tonight. The second thing uh, it, it, it was incredible. I had, um, on the course of this trip, I had, before I got there, I had booked reservations to go um, to something that was also very near and dear to me. Uh, if you know me, you know I do not watch television. I just don't feel like it's the best use of my time. And I'm, I'm doing so many other things. You heard me share at the beginning of the intro what's what I'm passionate about. And there's just nothing on the television that, for me, warrants me pulling my time away from all of those things. Uh, but when I am trying to rest, or I am trying to get some good ideas of what to cook, I will go on to the Food Network. And I love to watch cooking shows. I love them, I love them, I love them. I'm a very visual person. And um, funny story, when my husband and I first got married, everything I made, I couldn't make it well. I would burn it, I would something would go wrong. Um, and so what helped me was save our marriage was the Food Network because me seeing them cook it, me seeing the preparation, me seeing how things were done. I, the recipes were nice. I, you know, I could read the instructions, but something wouldn't click for me. But once I would see it in action, because I'm visual, then I could run with it. Then I was just like, I got this. I can make this. Oh, I, I got, I, all right. I, I, I'm telling you, I've become a beast. <laughs> in the kitchen because of Food Network. So I said all that to say that when I found out that we were going to be in Orlando, Florida, and when I found out that the timing was just a, a, also along with um, the Food Network's Food and Wine Festival, I just got super excited. I said, oh God, this is so amazing. You know how much I love watching them and to, to be there and to see a live cooking demonstration would be a dream come true. So I was excited about that. I booked this. I reserved it online. I paid for it in advance. I had the time written down and it was in my book to get it done. Well, as it should have it, uh, when we got uh, down there to Florida and we started going through our day and our agenda, one thing after another happened, making it seem, <laughs> stick with me, seem impossible for me to get there. Um, there was more than enough time in my planning. There was a more than enough time in my schedule, in my itinerary. But then in real life, when I began to walk out those steps, obstacles started coming from nowhere. Things unanticipated, unplanned for, uncalculated. Can anybody identify with that? Have you ever, ever had a plan in your mind that was flawless? 
It seemed like it should have been executed without any problems, without any issues. But then as you begin to walk it out, as you begin to try to see it come to pass, you start getting interference and obstacles from every direction. Well, that's what happened. One thing right after another, we uh, had took a shuttle over to um, the Disney parks and this was all happening at Epcot. But of course the shuttle was going to the main transportation center at Magic Kingdom. So then once we got there, we had to run over to the monorail and then try to get the monorail over to Epcot. By this time, it's already 2.40, 2.45. It started at 2.30 p.m. So now we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. We get to the, the monorail, we take that over there, we get to um, Epcot and we're like, okay, you know, it, it's, it's three o'clock. We've missed most of it, but that's okay. We're gonna at least try to get into the end of it get to the park, uh, you know, run, get to the, the place where you show your tickets. I show them my phone. Um, and they're just like, you know, that's not what we need. You know, it needs to be a barcode. It needs to be something on here we can scan. And I'm like, oh my goodness, are you kidding me? So they point me over to the admission ticketing office and I'm looking at my clock like it's three o'clock. The demonstration's over at 3.15 and I have to go get in a line to get my tickets. Oh, so we go get in a line. By the time we finish getting the tickets, y'all, it's 310. There is literally like five minutes left before it's over. So can we have a transparency moment now? I mean, can I just be totally real with you? You know, lady pastorpreneur, filled with faith, all that good stuff was good and discouraged. I mean, beyond discouraged, like, like upset discouraged. Looking at my husband, like, how could I let this happen? How did this, how did I lose all this time? What what, why didn't I plan? Because you have to know me. I'm a planner. I like to get things done. And so I'm beating myself up at this point. Like, how did I get in this position? How did I let this happen? How did I plan all this time and then get here and I'm going to miss it? And my husband looked at me and he said, let's go. And I'm like, for what? Like, why? It's 310. Like, by the time we get there, it's going to be over. Let's just go do something else. And again, the same guy who picked up the phone and called Gaylord when I was told that there were no more rooms left was the same guy that said, let's go. We need to get to this festival center. And I said, oh, okay, we're going we're gonna to push. Let's push. And as we're running, and mind you, it's hot. We're in Florida. We're, you know, booking it. Going across this park, you know, people are looking at us like, did they steal something? Like, why are they running through the park? <laughs> as we're getting through this park, we finally get there. And I'm like, oh my goodness, we're here. It's like 3.15. So we get to the park. I, I, I grab my phone out where I have my little reservations and everything. I get stopped again, y'all. <laughs> the, the people at the front desk, they said, we need to give you tickets. You can't use that. You need tickets to go in. And I said, well, it's probably over, but we're hoping at least our food is left over. At least we can get our food. So they said, let us, let me walk you over there because we don't want you to run into any problems since it's, you know, over. We want to make sure you at least get your food. So the staff walked over, they took us over there and they said, you know, these lovely people, they got held up. They weren't able to attend the demonstration. Is it possible that they could still get their food? And of course, we're at Disney, you know, they like to make magic happen. They like to make dreams come true. And they were like, sure, no problem. We'll get you your food. Just have a seat. So they put us like at the corner of the restaurant so they could get cleaned up and all the people are leaving y'all. It's over. It's a wrap. Everybody's leaving out. So as everybody's leaving out, we look and we see on the stage, the chef is still up there talking to people, asking, answering questions for people. And the host is still there. So I said to my husband, let's just go over there and snap a shot, you know? So we just get like a selfie with them behind us, like, boom, you know, at least we can get a memory of us being here, even though we missed the whole demonstration. And we sat down with this attitude of gratitude and we just started eating our food. So as we're sitting there eating our food, everybody's gone, the chef's off the stage, all the people have left, the, the staff are, are cleaning the restaurant, probably getting ready for another de demonstration. What should happen, but the chef should walk out. The chef walks out, he comes, he has a seat at the table and he just starts talking to us. 
The next thing you know, he's telling us all about the, the, the meal that he made. He's explaining to us how he made it. He's even given us the story behind the meal and the legend of the three sisters. And we're sitting here and it's funny to me because as he's talking at some point, I don't even hear him talking anymore. At, at some point, I'm just in my mind having a praise fest. In my mind, I'm just thinking, saying, God, you're so amazing. You're so awesome. Even in the midst of me feeling like all hope was gone because I failed and I didn't do this right and I didn't plan, you still had a plan for me. You still had a way of escape for me. You still had provision for me. You love me that much that you still found a way, even in spite of all my mistakes and all my shortcomings and all the things that I did wrong. God, you're so amazing. And so as I'm thinking that, I'm looking at my husband, he's thinking that we're just shaking our head like the whole time he's talking. We're just sitting there going, <laughs> we serve such an awesome God. It's just not even funny. And so as he's talking, then the hostess comes over. She sits down. She's eating her food. We're just talking and I'm just looking at them. Now we're past the food. We're talking about our kids. We're talking about family. He's taking pictures with us. He's signing our our menu. And meanwhile, we're the only people here. This is just for us. This goes on and on and on. What am I telling you this story for? Well, I'm going to tell you the same thing I told him. There are opportunities where, sure, if I had gotten there on time, I would have been happy and I would have saw the demonstration and that would have been just fine. But do you realize that by me not making it when I was supposed to, it was just an opportunity for God to show his glory, for him to show his majesty and his power in my life. But catch this, none of which I would have discovered if I had of given up. Do you see that? Do you see that if after I had reached the park and reached the point of no return, looked at my clock and said, oh, I can never make it, forget it. Let's go do something else. God wouldn't have been any less powerful, but I wouldn't have seen his power because I quit. Listen, that's what I want to share to you and with you tonight. There is something that God is working on in your life that you're at that point too. You're at that breakup point. You're at that give up point. You're at that point where you're looking at it. You see the deadline. You see the calendar. You're thinking to yourself, there is no point in continuing. There is no point in going on. There is no point in continuing to try. It's over. It's a wrap. It's done. It cannot happen because you're looking at the things that you can see in the natural. You're looking at the deadline. You're looking at the calendar. You're looking at the clock. You're looking at a physical visual report of what you can see, like me, okay? I, I know, I was there. But then there has to be that midwife. That ha there has to be that person in your life that is, no, 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 don't you dare give up now. See, for me, that was my husband. He knew how important this was to me. And quite frankly, he probably didn't want to see me pout <laughs> the rest of the whole trip. But he knew that our God is able and he can do exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ask or even think to ask. There's stuff that you don't even know to ask God for. There's stuff that you don't even know to pray for. Because in our little minds, we can't even conceive that it's an option that it can be done. But, oh, it can be done if you don't quit. So I want to be in your life tonight What my husband had to be in my life on at 3.15 on Friday when I was waiting for the give up point and it was time for me to push to the breakthrough point. I want you to push. I want you to keep going. I want you to even in the face of just impossibility, keep going and saying, you know what? It's not too hard for God. It's not impossible. It is not over until God says it's over. I don't know what God's going to do. I don't know when he's going to do it. I don't know how he's going to do it. But I just believe by faith that he has something in store for me. And I have to press on and see what the end is going to be. I know right now I'm so filled with joy and happiness that I did that, that I had somebody to push me, to make me keep going so that I could see the hand of God. And I'm praying that I can be that person for you tonight. 
So I want you to share with me what it is you believe in God for. I want you to share with me what it was that you thought was hopeless. And I want you to be sure to come back and to let me know how awesome our God is and how he made a way for you out of no way because you refused to give up. Well, I hope that blessed you tonight. I'm going to sign off because I have another broadcast that's going to start in just five minutes where I'm going to be doing some training and personal development for all those who are interested and want to come back in the next five minutes. But I want to end this by saying I am so excited about what God wants to do in your life. He is not a respecter of persons. What he did for me, I know he will do for you if you believe him. So increase your faith tonight, increase your belief tonight, and be obstinate and wait on God until you see your breakthrough come. Again, my name is Alicia Lytle, aka Lady Pastorpreneur. Feel free to follow me at alishalytle.com, where you can also join my mailing list and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Meanwhile, I will be waiting to see you excel. Take care, everybody. Good night. <laughs>